all right so we'll go ahead and get started if you want to pause the video if you haven't gotten your potatoes peeled as well as your onion you're more than welcome to do that um, I'll go ahead and get started with making Salisbury steak today these are going to be uncut videos so it's going to be from start to finish so first um, like I said you'll cut your onion we're just really doing prep right now um, again you don't have to cut them this size I do cut them in strips fairly large only because um, it's more kid friendly when, <laughs> when you do it that way um, so that way because it will be in the gravy so if the kid does not eat onions I know my toddler does not well she does but just not this large I just um, make them big enough to where you get that onion flavor but you don't necessarily um, have the big chunk of onion so I do cut them pretty large um, for this depending on how many people or how much onion you would like you can do another slice and you cut this off it doesn't matter for me I only do just about a half of a onion I'll probably do another side so um, like I said we're gonna be doing these videos from start to finish because some people are more productive and would cook longer or would want to cook if the videos didn't jump around or maybe you don't like standing in the kitchen feeling like you're bored or whatever the case may be um I guess I'll use that so I'm done with my onion so we'll go ahead and start cutting the potato my potato kind of went a little brown I'm still here let me just rinse those off and these are going into boiling water so it's fine so your water should be sizzling uh, semi you're gonna try to want to get these into even pieces so they boil evenly however I mean it doesn't always happen y'all are gonna see the bloopers <laughs> that I go through like I said it's gonna be pretty much uncut so if I mess up a word if I get my words jumbled up and twisted I'm not going to going back and clipping it out so we'll stick with that um the reason why you're cutting the potatoes before you boil them is for faster cook time a lot of people don't like to do homemade mashed potatoes this recipe can also work with idaho potatoes you know the bag potatoes from the grocery store i would suggest the buttery kind it, just keep in mind it just has a high salt content so but yeah you're just gonna be don't I'm I'm not a professional chef so don't come for me about how I'm dicing the potatoes and my the way I cut is incorrect so it's fine it's, it gets the job done so right now my water is actually boiling you can go ahead and put some salt in it now I'll do it as well once I finish cutting the potatoes. But yeah, it's boiling pretty fast. I'm probably going to add some more water to mine. Depending on how hot your stove gets is, is just all going to depend on the cook time because I could tell you medium high but your stove is low and then if you're cooking your cookware is um, different it conducts heat different so let me go ahead and add a little bit more water to my pot like I said this part can be skipped so you don't have to go through this it's just so that way we can do this together I will go ahead and salt my water being that it was just boiling yours probably should be boiling at any point like I said once you get your potatoes cut and your onion cut you can go ahead and jump forward um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the potatoes into 
my pot because it's just back at a boil. All I did was add a little bit of water as well as some salt. So. Right now I'm just throwing the potatoes in. I might have put too much water. I knew I give me two seconds. I did not put that amount of water for a reason. <laughs> okay, so we got rid of some of the excess water. Like I said, you guys are gonna see my hiccups <laughs> and all of that. But that's okay. I'm doing it for you. So, being that we have the onions already cut, I'm gonna throw that in the sink. Get this clamped off. We're gonna go ahead and season the meat. Okay. So we'll get this out of the way. We'll go ahead and season the meat. You can use ground beef, ground chuck, <laughs> um, either or works, whichever ground meat you would like to use this case i am using ground chuck it's a pound of ground chuck um so i use a stainless steel bowl only because it is meat and of course you know i mean you can always use plastic i don't i don't use plastic i would use something like this for uh mashed potatoes or something like that um, but I use stainless steel to season my meat, especially overnight. So, as listed in the description, you are going to be using beef bouillon powder, body of complete seasoning, seasoned salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. Okay? So, the beef bouillon packet should be like that. You're gonna go ahead and open it. Now, you can use however much or however little. Um, I'm using about half of the pack um, because it does contain salt. So about half of the pack. Then moving forward, this is Complete Season by Badia, Badia Complete Season. You're gonna see me talk about two on uh, complete seasonings, and that is a body of complete seasoning and adobo complete seasoning. Um, I would put no less than a tablespoon of body of complete um, seasoning. I don't really measure, but at minimum, I would use a tablespoon, maximum two. And we'll go ahead and get the onion powder. With seasonings like onion powder, garlic powder, you can use as much or as little as you would like to because it, it's not salty so it'll do it to taste like i said i wouldn't use less than kind of a tablespoon of each or if you want to just follow with me <laughs> with my hand gesture and see how long i'm shaking <laughs> you can do that as well this is garlic powder that i'm seasoning uh the meat with now and i know it looks like a lot but it's okay because we're going to be adding, um, mixing breadcrumbs as well as egg and Worcestershire sauce into it. So I've already seasoned with the garlic, onion, body of complete, and the beef. I'm going to also add just a little bit of pepper, about a teaspoon of pepper. I don't add that much pepper. I mean, now if you want it spicy, then of course. And then we're going to do seasoned salt which is Lowry's seasoned salt, okay? Lowry seasoned salt, and we'll do about um, mm, half a tablespoon, tablespoon of that. So right now it does look like a lot of stuff is packed on there. Um, while we do this, we'll go ahead and add the breadcrumbs. Now, I can measure the breadcrumbs for you just so you don't have like breadcrumb <laughs> uh, sounds very steak. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and measure this. So we'll do 
about two tablespoons of breadcrumbs. Two full <laughs> tablespoons of breadcrumbs it should be fine. That's about how much I would have shook in there. I'll, I'll, I will measure some stuff, like especially if you don't know how much to put or whatever. And then we're going to add one egg. Again, this is to a pound of ground beef. If you're doing, if you're feeding more people and using two pounds, then of course you're going to want to use two eggs, four tablespoons of breadcrumbs, so on and so forth. Worcestershire sauce. I just use the Publix brand. <laughs> if you have a fancier brand, then that's fine. Uh, we're going to do like three shakes. I'm just going to show you. That's a shake, okay, to me. <laughs> so we'll do one or two, three. That was that was a mess. So I would just maybe do just sprinkle about <laughs> 10 sprinkles of Worcestershire sauce in that. That is going to give it some um, additional flavor. Then we're going to go ahead and mix. I use gloves just because with this it tends to be messy. Um, I also use gloves for other meats just because I don't like meat getting under my fingernails. And it's just pretty gross sometimes. <laughs> and plus my uh, nails aren't done. So moving forward, I am mixing, mixing, mixing the ground beef. You shouldn't see any visible clumps of breadcrumbs or egg. If you see that, you want to just mix that in there. It should give a consistency of like, um, like a paste now I'm gonna add a dash another dash of Worcestershire sauce um feel free to add with me <laughs> you've seen how many times I shook so <laughs> we're just gonna add a, a, just another little dash it doesn't hurt so my potatoes are boiling What we're going to go ahead and do, which we should have done, trust me, I will be better next time. I like to kill all the birds at <laughs> with one stone at one time. Okay, we're just going to cut the analogy out. Nobody, <laughs> we're going to ignore it. So, anywho, <laughs> I usually would have had my stove on so I could pat into my patties and then go ahead and move on to the stove, but I didn't do that. I'll probably put a disclaimer in the front of the video and let you know to turn on your um, actual frying pan that you'll be frying the patties in. So you'll want to turn that up for me. I'm going to just turn it on eight, which is like medium high right now, just so I can um, catch up because I just want the pan to get hot. So depending on the size, the size of your patties is all at your discretion. You can make them small for kids. What I do, I fry the kids' patties, or in this case, just my kid, unless I had other no, I had other kids coming. Because most kids don't like gravy. If your kid likes gravy, they're awesome. <laughs> but mine does not, and most kids that I know don't really, especially toddlers, don't really eat gravy. So to make the meal more kid friendly, it would be just like a patty and mashed potatoes, you know, with butter on it, obviously. But it versus Salisbury steak. So I'm just grabbing a like kind of a handful. If you can see a handful of meat and making it round and then patting it out. Like I said, the kids patty, if you have kids in your family, like I said, that may not eat gravy. We'll go ahead and do theirs with no, we won't put them back into the gravy once we fry them. Like I said, at any point, if you complete this before I do, then uh, you're more than welcome to jump through to the timestamp. I'm only doing this for people. Most people don't really cook or like to cook because they don't like to stand in the kitchen the entire time. Have you ever noticed like when 
you're on the phone with someone and you're either more productive like cleaning or you're cooking or just whatever the task that you're trying to accomplish just more productive in general when you have somebody to talk to well in this case listen to I know I talk a lot so like I said <laughs> you can jump around it does not bother me I'm doing this for everyone's benefit right now I just made six patties this is kind of the smallest one a little bit but I made six patties with this meat with this pound of meat like I said if you use more meat um, you'll just tweak the seasonings I'm gonna take these gloves off and something just splashed on my face <laughs> So, um, we are going to go ahead. The frying pan is hot and hopefully it does not pop up on me. I know that it's going to be pretty hard to view. I'm sorry. This is, like I said, a live video. <laughs> so, we're going to try to work it the best way we can to where you can see. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sit in the patties. We're gonna cross our fingers that all six are gonna fit in here, but I'm sure it won't. So I have to do four at a time. If your pan is smaller, of course, you're gonna have to do however many that you can fit. I do have mine on kind of high. I am gonna Turn it down for a second and have it frying and sizzling. And another reason why I'm doing the videos live and uncut is so that way you kind of know how long to keep the items on. Yes, I can give you an estimate. Yes, the, the patties will cook in about, um, you know, let's say 10 minutes a piece or whatever the case is you know flip halfway but some people just like to know exactly the steps how long you left it on right now I am gonna turn my stove up to medium because I just had it on I had to turn it down to four I did have it on eight if you can see that clearly I had it on eight so um, right now my potatoes are going. Those should be done shortly while the patties are frying. This is a very simple, simple meal. I'm just going to uh, talk to you guys. Like I said, I will have uh, the timestamps. You're going to hear me say it a lot because I don't know who is watching the video at what time. If they've already jumped around, you can still jump around. Uh, but yeah, I just really enjoy cooking. And... I guess sharing recipes. Um, this is a passion line, and I guess let me go ahead and show you my face. Let me go ahead and get this camera pulled up if I can fix it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I told you this is gonna be uncut. I'm dropping things. <laughs> um, so this is me. I am Dominique. <laughs> um, the lighting is kind of bad. Let's see if we can get some better light. This is my first video, so please do not <laughs> do not judge me with my first video. Um, like I said, I want to give people a different experience with cooking. Um, a lot of videos that you'll watch, you know, it'll start and it'll give you the measurements and then it'll jump, boom. The potatoes are cut boom the patties are frying boom it's in gravy I'm trying to give a different experience if you don't like me to you know doing this um I have the timestamps <laughs> so that's why I'm doing both so I have to I'm gonna put them exactly at each moment so you'll see when it switches you can still do it it's just you're gonna have the full video as well and you have the other option as well to you know be with me um this other option i'm gonna try not to have the uh, water on too long you can clean as you go with me 
because it's nothing like cooking dinner and then having a sink full of dishes after to clean. So we're gonna try to clean as we go. And let's be real, I had some dishes in here before, <laughs> before uh, I started cooking. So that'll help while it's frying. Now at this point, I would go ahead and check your um, food. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go. So they are nice and ready to flip. When you see, when you see that like that brown ring around it, that means they are actually okay to flip. So I'll go ahead and get my spatula. See that little crust? It's okay because it's gonna be gravy in it. Let me flip y'all down so you can see me flip all of them. Like I said, bear with me. This is my first video, so it's a, it's a little rough. <laughs> we're trying to get my stand, my stand up and everything. So we're just going to flip them. Do not press down on them because that will press the juices out. And this, now I can add my other two patties. Um, if you would like to do that. Or however many patties you made, you may have to pause the video or whatever. Um, if I finish before you or if you use a half a pound. Because you can make this meal, like say you're single and you know, you only you don't want to waste all the meat. Or you know, do a large portion. You can use a half a pound and still use egg. Just crack it in a bowl first and kind of like try to scoop out half of that egg, like between the yolk and the white. Um, you can use half of the seasoning. Season to your liking. The whole goal of this is really to have people be productive and to have people be product more productive while, while cooking because a lot of people will tell you like, oh, it's cooking slow. Like... Is it cooking slow or are you cooking slow? Because we have a tendency to do everything else. Okay, so while I was trying to set my camera up, I literally clicked off, but it's no gap in the time. I promise, it's no gap in the time, I'm sorry. So it's not uncut. It's <laughs> I literally stopped uh, recording it when I just tried to set that up and then went back to it. Um, I just want to give people a different experience or a helpful tool rather than uh, fry the patties and then come back and then cut the potatoes and then put the water on. You know, it's just going to be a smarter way, helpful way of cooking. If you already know how to cook, kudos to you. Skip around in the video. Feel free. Like I said, I'm just here talking, cleaning, and all of that good stuff. So, now that I have done that, we don't want to turn this into a vlog. I'll go ahead and put you back near the food. We're going to get ready to start the potatoes. These patties are still frying. They are still frying. Let's see. Now, to gauge whether or not your patty is 100% completely fried, you can, you can take a knife, you can stab it. You see all that juice that just literally ran out of there? If the juice runs out red, you know that it's still uncooked. Right now, it's nothing but grease and, you know, oils and stuff like that. You can do that with every single one of them. Um, but that's just letting out all of the juice and stuff like that. So, your patties are pretty much done. If you only had enough meat for four patties, we can go ahead and move forward. Um, go ahead and get in place. So like I said, everybody stove moves or cooks differently. If you feel like your patties are not done, keep them in. If 
you want to check, you'll just cut them open. Leave the grease inside of this pan because we're going to use that for the gravy, the drippings. So we're going to move those patties because those patties are going a little bit less. Our potatoes, to check your potatoes, you can use a fork and you will stick that in. If it goes through with ease, then they're pretty much done in which they are actually just falling apart. So we can go ahead and start on the potatoes because we're about to actually wrap up pretty soon. So you'll want to turn off your potatoes that are boiling because you have to boil them to death. <laughs> I have my patties on a plate. I've turned up my um, last two hamburgers because we're not gonna we're not gonna go through all of that. Okay, we are just not. I am sorry. Oops. Can y'all see me? Okay, so we're gonna drain the potatoes with the strainer if you have a strainer if not you can just hand strain them whatever use the lid Woo. sorry you can um use the lid close it pour it out use your strainer either way it goes it gets the job done you do not need a potato masher to mash these potatoes. Let's just mash potatoes and still get mashed with a spoon, a fork, all of that good stuff. It's just I have a mashed potato masher. You can mash your mashed potatoes in the pot. I am mashing them in a bowl because my um, um, mashed potato masher, <laughs> my mashed potato uh, masher is uh, stainless steel, and because it's stainless steel, I don't want to scratch up the Teflon on my pot. But like I said, you can do it. Either way, and we're just cooking as we, I mean, cleaning as we go. So, like I said, you can skip through. You're going to hear me say this a hundred times because I know it gets redundant. It sounds like maybe I'm repeating myself or whatever. But I'm going to just do that the first couple of videos. Even throughout the, my videos, I'm going to be doing that. It may be a little hard to hear me until I get, like, a microphone with all of the background noise and stuff. But, um, yeah. I am going to try my best to do that every video just in case you only watching for one recipe or whatever. I want you to know that you can jump through this. So, the mashed potatoes are here. So, I'm trying to get this together so you can actually see it. So, here are the mashed potatoes. We've already washed our pan. I'm going to go ahead and flip my other two patties that are on here you might want to if you didn't check i put a disclaimer on that because i was talking so these got a little bit more crispy but that is okay so to your mashed potatoes i don't add a whole lot you don't have to do gouda cheese and all of that stuff right now all i'm going to add is some salt and i'm going to say um just a teaspoon of salt because potatoes can you can add to stuff but you cannot take it out if you add too much salt and they're salty you, there's nothing that you can do i'm going to add some pepper if you like pepper the pepper is optional i have I only added not even a teaspoon and um i'm going to measure the milk just so you know but really um it doesn't matter how much you add. It depends on the, the looseness or the texture of your potatoes that you're looking for. If you want something that's more clumpy, you can go ahead and 
obviously at um, just a tad bit of milk. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the butter first. I'm going to do two tablespoons. If you can see, those are two healthy <laughs> tablespoons of butter. Because you know that they mashed potatoes. So I will go ahead and um, I won't do a measurement for the milk. I'm going to just add a little bit and see how it goes each time. So I just added just a small amount. And that is not going to cut it. Not for the texture I'm looking for. If you look, it's really thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more. You can throw in a little bit more if you follow in exactly to the T. But cooking, I will always stick to this 100%. Cooking is all about adding stuff until it tastes good. If you cook like that, then all, I mean, all is well. To me, recipes are just a guide on how to make it and what that person used. You can always change it because if you use the amount of seasonings that I use and then you say, oh, I didn't, you know, I don't, I didn't like that. It was too, too much seasoning. Then okay, next time you make it, now you can customize it to your liking and your taste buds. You do not have to use the seasonings that I use. You don't have to use the amount of seasonings that I use. Um, so yeah, that's that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is now that my potatoes are finished or semi-finished, you're going to get a, I can use this spoon because yeah. you're going to get a clean spoon. Always taste your food as you go. Because then, you, I mean, you just don't know what it tastes like. So I'm going to taste it. It needs more salt. To me. Um, so if you um, do your potatoes and you think that it needs something else, I'm going to use my other spoon to get just another little tablespoon of butter. It just depends on how you like your potatoes. Let me wash my spoon. So I'm washing my spoon, but I'm gonna. You don't want to stick your same spoon. I mean, I get it. You know, if you <laughs> just with your family, you know, you don't cook for people. But even still, <laughs> you don't want to stick your spoon you just ate off of back in the food. Food 101. We just mix them. So that should be pretty much. Mix. I don't like loose mashed potatoes. I'm just going to tell you that. So this is the consistency of... Can I do Am I doing that right? So. That's good for me. Right there. So. If you see how I just added. I didn't even put that much milk. It's not that hard to make mashed potatoes. You just put it's, it's basically adding stuff like I said until it tastes good if you want to put other seasonings in it if you want your mashed potatoes to taste different you can do that I'm gonna throw some foil over this because no point in throwing it back in the pot um, no point in throwing it back in the pot so we have that now I will um, go ahead. We're going to get on to the gravy and we almost done. And we stayed in the, the kitchen the entire time. You don't, it doesn't have to take two hours and three hours for stuff. Let's remember that. <laughs> so this is my pan with my drippings in it. Now you're going to see it's some extra kind of crispies in there. Now you can either cook with this stuff. Or not, but the thing is, I, w I usually don't, only because when you get ready to saute, you can leave some of the stuff at the bottom, but I'll get the big crumbs out. If you can see that, I'll get the big crumbs out, only because it'll get darker the more you cook. So we'll take that out. We're going to put the pan back on the stove, okay? 
we're gonna turn the stove on I'm gonna turn it on um four I hope I got it pointed towards the right one but I'm, I got it pointed um to four so that way we'll go ahead and get this back so you can watch the gravy process this is the key part to the entire thing I'm trying to get it to where you can see exactly what I'm gonna be doing so and maybe I should have turned off this give me a second while you do that like I said turn your stove on one moment Well, maybe I should have done that before. <laughs> I told you, this is the uncut version, so you're getting all the bloopers and <laughs> all of that stuff. So, the grease is still hot because you just fried the burgers. So, by now, you can go ahead and add your onions. We are making the gravy now. And this is a very important step. A uh, step. A lot of people are intimidated by making their own gravy, so they get jarred gravy, or whatever the case may be. Um, but gravy is not that hard of a process, and the gravy that I make tastes really good. We're gonna throw those onions in there. So, now that we got the onions, we're going to go ahead and saute them. So, you're going to pretty much cook them. You can follow my steps. So I'm just breaking them up because, like I said, I get them in long strips like that to make it more kid-friendly. So, when I add the gravy... When I add them back to the gravy, if a kid doesn't eat onions, it's easy to pick these onions out versus the small ones. So you're going to notice the onions get some color on them, but when they get soft, you'll be able to tell. This one needs to get a little bit more cooked. While our hamburger patties are just chilling out. So we're just going to keep sauteing. We're pretty much done. While you wait on the onions to go ahead and cook, you are going to grab your all-purpose flour. Okay? So I forgot to get my all-purpose flour. Give me one second, guys. Oh, no. I'm short and my flower is on <laughs> the top shelf. Okay. Okay. So the onions are about done. It is not a measurement to the flour. Reason being is because the more flour you put, the thicker the consistency of the gravy is. So we can take out these onions because they're, they'll still cook in the gravy. Okay, so the same plate, that you have your patties on, you can just throw them on top of those patties. The way I make my um, Salisbury steak 
takes the um, hamburgerness. I don't really know how to say it. Takes the hamburgerness away from the actual uh, patty and stuff. You know, it's more like a meatloaf. Oh no. So, those juices we're going to put back in there. Because you have to fry your flour. When you're doing um, gravy, you fry the flour first. So, get you a metal spoon. Okay? I know it's a lot of people going to be like, oh, it's, you don't put this um, metal on the Teflon. I know that, but you're going to be using the back of the spoon. Okay? To, to fry your gravy. So, well, not right now. Um... But you're going to sprinkle maybe a tablespoon of flour at a time in the grease, okay? It's going to clump together. Let me see if I can get this um, closer for you guys and it focus. Is it focus or is it out of focus? I'm sorry. I hope it has not been out of focus this whole time. I really hope so. <clears throat> While my flower is burning up, messing with this camera. Okay, so you're going to notice it's going to turn like kind of liquid-ish. You can add more flour. But you add a little bit of flour at a time to the grease. It should really be more than this, honestly. If you have a lot of grease in your pan, that's ideal. And I'm referring to the drippings from the hamburgers. I, I, I always forget sometimes I did get lean beef. The best beef to get is ground beef where it has more fat because it, you know, you have a lot more oil to work with. So you're going to just keep adding um, flour until you get just about enough that would... Um, Kind of make this much in the middle, kind of. Because I'm going to add a little bit more. The longer you fry your flour, the darker your gravy will be. So I just added that last little bit. It is a little dry. But you can always, uh, like I said, add oil. If you don't want as much oil, this is a good <laughs> way to view it. So this is your gravy. <laughs> Now, what you're going to do with the spoon that I told you to get, you're going to add water a little bit at a time. There's no measurement to the water. Okay? So get you a little um, bowl or a cup with warm water. It doesn't have to be necessarily warm because mine is not running warm. And you add a little bit at a time, okay? And you're going to use the back of the spoon to break it up, okay? It's going to dissolve fast. But you're going to just add a little bit and smush the clumps in circles, okay? If you put too much flour, that's the more water you'll need because it's going to make more gravy. Try not to leave that other cooking gravy like not wet. Try to get it all wet. But do it slowly. So, I did put a lot just because I want to make, just show you how to make the um, gravy and the consistency and stuff like that. You'll want to keep doing this. I know it's a lot. I know this. <laughs> I definitely know it's a lot, but it's worth it in the end when you're able to make your own gravy instead of jarred gravy. Or like if somebody comes over and, you know, you're trying something new. As long as you know how to season properly, you're going to want to turn up your stove as well. The more water you add, it's going to be less. So I turned mine up to six. You guys seen how my stove was? So I just turned it up. Um, the longer it cooks, the thicker it gets. You see how thick this is right now? And clumpy. It's not going to be like that the more water I add and the more you uh, mix it around. 
you got to keep it mixing. Like I said, I'm not scraping the bottom of the pan. I'm just mixing. I'm getting some more water because I ran out. But this is why I'm doing them uncut because it's hard to explain how to make gravy by clipping it past it and saying mix with the back of the spoon and <laughs> all of that other stuff. So that's why you're going to see. Are you seeing where? Now you can skip past this. You'll keep doing this process. It is going to become watery. But once it cooks down, it will become a gravy consistency. Okay. But you have to break up these clumps. The clumps that you are visible and able to, you'll just keep mixing all around the pan. The longer you fry that um, flour, the darker. This is going to be like a kind of a light brownish gravy. When you see water gaps in it, you just use the back of the spoon to mix it all together again do not scrape you use the back of the spoon see how that stuff is stuck to the back it's because I keep mashing on it in all the spots on the part now you see it's becoming more gravy like now you don't have to do a slew of gravy okay let's get that straight <laughs> you don't have to do fill up the gravy to here the gravy is actually <laughs> done for the amount that you, I mean come on you don't have to put the patties back in I do uh, but you just don't want to have a whole lot of gravy now if you're wanting a lot um, you just keep see how this is it's thickening up you just keep adding water and mixing okay to the desired amount that you would like but you do it little piece little bit at a time you'll know when to stop because it'll you'll know when to stop so at this point uh, now that you know how to make the gravy I'm gonna go ahead because I don't need a whole slew of gravy like I said is I'm gonna let that boil and if you see any pieces you can always do that add water as you need it I'm boiling mine kind of fast because this video is getting long and I want you to know that this can get done you know fairly quickly and have an entire meal now while that is boiling I'm going to take some regular salt and add about a teaspoon okay I'm going to take some pepper, about a teaspoon. You are going to taste this gravy. You have to mix it in. Once it cooks down, it's going to be thicker. And also, once you turn the stove off, once it stops bu bubbling. So, it is fairly hot right now. I'm going to get my spoon that I washed and get a little taste. You got to blow it off because it's really hot. I actually put enough salt and enough pepper in my gravy. I hope you guys like the way it tastes. I'm going to go ahead and turn down my stove to the number three you've seen the knobs on the stove and i'm gonna go ahead and add my patties in here and all six should fit now patties and onions now depending on how much salt if you've stuck with me and did the same amount i did then you'll know um that that was really that's that's good and plus you still get the seasonings that were still in the pan from the beef and add all of that now what you do this is my cooking spoon now you can either toss them in the gravy like to get the gravy on them or you can spoon it again I'm not scraping you hearing it cling on the side of here 
So you'll just find your little gravy patches. You can go like this, flip them all over, flip them in that gravy, flip them, flip them. And now either you can leave them cooking of course if you have a lid because you have a smaller pot i had a smaller i mean not a smaller pot it was still a large one but because it has a lid i usually would have i'm i don't know <laughs> but i would I, i'm gonna transfer it because this um doesn't have a lid i guess i'll do that now while y'all see it excuse the stuff i got on the stove i'm gonna clean that up Clean as you go, people. Clean as you go. We're gonna go ahead and just slide that right on. We don't care. It's gravy. It's going in gravy. The only difference is this pot is still hot. But you are good to go after this. I don't. If I don't want to cook this anymore, I don't have to. Um, dinner is served. <laughs> I could go ahead and plate this up for you, but pretty much the recipe is done. I'm going to turn this on low um, and just have that summer so we can go ahead and end the video. But um, anywho, depending on how much gravy you make, I, like I said, it will cover them. It's enough to put a little bit on your mashed potatoes and all of that good stuff. We'll go ahead and pull out a spoon. Get our mashed potatoes. Our foil. And this, you could all you have to do is open you a can of green beans, corn, <laughs> whatever your side choice is. And that's it. That is it. There are the potatoes. We'll see. We'll get this one. That has a lot on there, a lot of gravy. Let's get this one because it's cute. It's cute. See, that's a shame.